Good luck. This marks week 129 of the weekly teaching ladder. Um, so the idea is we get to play a higher rated opponent and a lower rated opponent and review the game afterward. Just always good fun. Um, in the first few moves of the game, I do adjust the volume levels as I think appropriate. Today it seems a bit quiet, so let's bump it up a bit. All right, our opponent seems to indicate that they're going to be playing a fourth file rook strategy, or at least some strategy where this diagonal, the, where this bishop line diagonal is closed. Uh, against this, I generally should prefer um, playing aggressively on file three, as I typically do. Um, note that I'm playing the second player. Yes, we say that black is the player who moves first, and yes, my pieces look darker than my opponent's. I do have a user style to help me keep straight which pieces belong to which player. Um, and if you read the fine print in the rules on this website, it doesn't say that this sort of style is forbidden. And I very much need it because I, whatever reason, both uh, chess national master Zug addict John Chernoff, as well as myself, really struggle keeping the right side pawns separate from the upside down pawns. Like, even though it, the shape is clearly delineated, I just struggle with it somehow. So uh, that's most of the purpose of the style, but I think it's also beginner friendly. So our opponent has undefended this bishop here, meaning. Well, I'm not sure what it means. I think they expect to move the silver very quickly and not have to worry, or not have the bishop hanging in just a second. And that's probably accurate. In general, I tend to prefer moving my king off to the right and building a castle here, almost independent of what my opponent does. Yes, if the opponent does something particularly unique in shape, I'll try a different tact, but... This is where I normally castle. Um, so, what does that leave us with today? Hmm, I wonder. I do wonder. So, the opponent defends this pawn. They've more or less yielded any initiative they might have started with. Um, and it seems clear they want to bring the rook over. Um, otherwise, they would have done something... Well, they would have moved the rook pawn by now if they intended to move it. Um, I could try to force the opponent's hand. I push this pawn, if they take, if I bring the bishop out, they could defend the lance, I could move up and take this pawn. I'm not really sure what the best play against the shape is. I feel like there should be some exploitative play here. Um, oh, right, so this bishop is defended by uh, the rook, so... Let me move my king toward a castle this way and see if they move the bishop and intend to play opposing rook or if they keep the bishop here I might consider diving the king into the corner to maximally secure it. What they call bear in the hole or anaguma castle. See okay here they intend to move the rook uh, closer to the edge of the board. Therefore if I don't want them doing that, I think this is my opportunity to push this pawn and bring the bishop out and ask the rook to move over here instead. I think eh, it sounds reasonable in principle. Does it really work? I'm not sure. Let's find out. <laughs> I have this propensity to just play moves and say, let's find out what happens. But yeah, they intend to strongly attack on this side of the board using the rook, 
which is why they've not formed a shape over here yet. That's why they've also moved the bishop out of the way so the rook could move there. Um, but thanks to the two pawn rule, Nifu, um, it's not permissible to drop a pawn to block the slide. And since they've not made a shape that protects the square at least more than once, they like they can't move the knight out because I'd take it. And they don't have any other piece that could move here. So I think the rook, instead of its intended destination over here, has to make a pit stop over here first. And I would like that to be where the rook sits for the entire game. Um, so that the opponent can't do their intended strategy. The problem with this is that if I'm careless, they can push the center pawn and my bishop gets chased around a bit and doesn't have anywhere to go while they build up a really fierce attack. That's a problem with this. There might be other problems. Um... But yeah, they could chase my bishop, uh, so I might need to prepare a place for it to run to. This is where my analysis ended when I concluded, hey, yeah, let's push this pawn. I see that my bishop could run back. If they open this diagonal, I could exchange bishops. Uh, or if they kick my bishop first and I retreat and they open the diagonal, I can move the silver up. So... To me, this looks playable, but I could very well be missing something. And this is not a good position to miss something in. Since it's like a wide open board, a lot of things could happen. I guess in including that that pawn I just pushed could be quite vulnerable, couldn't it? Um, I wasn't so much worrying about a pawn as worrying about trying to stop the opponent's attack. Um, uh, but yeah, potentially this pawn might hang to the silver, silver, silver. Or it might not, if my rook goes up here and comes back and defends this. Who knows? We've given both players something to think about. Let me have some water. So let me double check. I've got my live stream category set, but there are some subcategories. Um, let's see. And then, yeah, we also refer to this game sometimes, but not always. Some people refer to this as Japanese chess. Um, so putting tags like that on the live stream might encourage more people to who are looking for this sort of thing to find it. All right, so, yep, the opponent plans to bring their silver out and defend this pawn. Yeah, that's a responsible thing to do, I believe. Um, and I don't want to just let them defend it. Um, yeah, this is a precarious position, so if I take, if they move the rook over, we exchange, I promote. I think that's fine. If they move a silver here, I think I would sack for it. Just because that looks kind of fun to do. And I'm not playing a Santa, I'm playing as Gota, so... It behooves me to, I don't know, it probably behooves me to just retreat and not try anything too exciting ever. But that's apparently not how I play Shogi these days. So there's a risky move. Um, the sad part about this is I've spent... Um, I've moved my rook once, and I pushed this pawn one, two, three times, and then moved the rook a second time. 
So I invested five moves to get my rook out here. Where they can spend like two moves swatting it away. So this is why it if you're playing this the second player, you don't try this crazy ambitious sort of thing, usually. But I didn't want to see the opponent um attack with their preferred strategy. I wanted to make them try something else. Um but that might backfire. Let me just double check that I haven't put the cat on this. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let's. I tried to remove this. Let me remove it. My apologies. Yeah, previous to recording this live stream or episode, um, I did toggle off that badge, but somehow it toggled itself back on. I've got one browser scene that manages uh, all the components that show when I'm playing on any chess or shogi site. Yeah, the reason I'm not listing a plan here is because the opponent could do many, many different things. And it's... Right now, I should think about general considerations as opposed to specific tactical things. Unless there's something extremely forcing, say, like them moving the rook to oppose my rook. Then i got to think about, well, if I exchange rooks, they could drop the rook and fork a lot of pieces here. Like this pawn, this bishop, the silver. Well, the silver's protected. But the pawn and bishop fork is potentially a thing, so I'd need to like move the king out or something like that. Or I'd need to take the lance. Yeah. So they're not probably not gonna move the rook out, but they might move the silver or drop a pawn. Dropping the pawn would lock this silver in place and put them in a situation where they have no pawn in hand, so it's harder for them to initiate tactics. So there is some reward to my playing like a crazy uh, person here um, in that it's just a little bit harder for them to initiate an attack here. Um, hmm. If I put the rook out front, is there potentially a fork for me to worry about? Not that I'm seeing. If I put the rook out front and somehow bishops get exchanged, I think I survive. Yeah, and then the rook protects this pawn, so therefore draws the silver toward itself, and then the rook can drop back again. So, that seems playable. Hmm. Dropping the rook all the way back makes a lot of sense, too. Yeah. Like, unless I expect the opponent to hang this, I shouldn't leave my rook out front. Now, I don't like that the silver can approach and hit the rook, and, well, it's a problem either way. I don't have to like it, I just have to find a way to make things work. Alright, that looks playable. I guess the one factor in favor of putting the rook out front is that if bishops exchange, they are... Th well, actually, they're not threatening a drop forking this. But if these two are both simultaneously hanging, um, then I'd be able to swing the rook in front to defend this against a fork. Whereas behind, that might not be as effective jamming this behind my own pawn. Uh, I'm guessing they'll push the center pawn. Because that makes way for the silver to move. And it forces me to decide, does my bishop go right or left? Oh. Interesting. Um, 
Hmm. Pawn. Say they do nothing. Take, 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 rook take, rook take, knight takes. That's so weird. What? I mean, in principle, this looks like it's protecting the pawn. I'm not sure it does anything. They don't want to push this. Hmm. Drop. Yeah, I don't see what they do if I drop the pawn here. They might offer an exchange. Um. Hmm. Yeah, what does this achieve? What does this try to achieve? I mean, potentially it lets the lance move to safety. Um. My king is in a vulnerable spot. If I'm crazy sacking or trading pieces, well, there's not much I can do to easily improve this. Pawn takes, takes, yeah, uh, pawn, pass, takes. I don't get it. Oh, maybe they do knight takes. I drop a pawn again. Still don't get it. It'd be one thing if this bishop line were open, but it's not. Um, hmm. I mean, potentially the rook drops back and the silver, the gold moves up, and that makes their position whole. So there is reason for me to act right away. Pawn, any take, knight takes, pawn drop again. Knight moves, promote. Yeah, no, this, this has to be right. Yeah, if not for the rook retreating and gold upline, um, I could just sit on this tension. But since they have a way to make this position more solid, I need to strike while it's still fragile. I'm guessing... I mean, the impulse thing would be to hit the bishop, but the bishop's not staying here. We're exchanging it on the square soon. Maybe not right away, but the bishop's got a mission. I guess in light of all that analysis, perhaps instead of rook here, gold here might have been, might have helped this better. This is an issue point. This is another issue point. Yeah, so this is the impulse thing. There's, you can't fault anybody for playing this. Um, it doesn't seem to help the situation. It will eventually strike my king and bishop and all that over here. Um, Oh, I guess they're really wanting my lance, is the point. Um, hmm. Oops, let's move this back. So now if they open this diagonal, I can move a silver out. 
That's something they can't prevent me from doing. Oh, I guess this does win a tempo in some sense that, like, if I do pawn takes, and then later I do bishop takes... Yeah, okay, I see it. I didn't want to exchange my bishop for this rook with pawn takes, silver takes, pawn takes, but maybe that's what I should have done. I need to spend more time thinking, less time talking. Um, but I saw this line and I was quite happy with this, or quite content with it. Um, but maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe I had much better. If the silver moves, I can drop silver here and take here. Makes sense to try to escape the king. <sighs> Pawn, silver, bishop, knight. Yeah, this, this is not winning a piece or anything like that. Man, I thought this position was so much better than it is. It's an okay position, but I thought this was amazing. It's okay. Knight, king, knight. Looks crazy strong for no reason. Um, pawn, silver, bishop, knight. Pawn again. Knight, if... Yeah, I'm playing with fire. Neither of us have finished our castle yet. Um, what a mess. Oh, if I move the knight up, they can block my knight advance. Okay. So I shouldn't do something so crazy here. A silver improves in value as it moves up the board. So I will block my rook for one tempo, putting the silver on a better and a better square yet. But yeah, this does give the opportunity the opponent an opportunity to castle. Uh, but yeah, I, they, originally they had planned to move uh, the rook this direction, now the king's going this way. So neither of us really got what we wanted, but maybe what I wanted is for neither of us to get what we wanted. Just let me check one other thing. Okay, yeah, I do have my 81 dojo badge on the overlay. On my screen, lower right corner, I just see this big uh, square greet button that we use for um, wishing the opponent well at the beginning of the game. So the opponents move both centers toward the silver center of the they move both silvers toward the center of the board. Oh. Okay, that cuts off the line of my bishop here. I didn't anticipate that. Well, it blocks their bishop. It really does. Um... Hmm... 
It also puts pressure on my pawn here. Um, my first reaction was, can I just take that? <laughs> that might be inadvisable. Um, though, there are some, some advantages to doing that, but not enough. Well, if I take this pawn, and then I push on the bishop's head here, eh, it's kind of fun. Kind of. Um, but yeah, this is a mess. All right, this adequately defends my bishop's threat. Uh, so keeping the pawn on the square doesn't increase tension any further, so let's liquidate it. Um, hmm. We're going to build some kind of castle here. I don't know what, but it's going to have to be pretty strong. <laughs> uh, also try to get the king out of the center. Yep. So if I push this, if they take, if I drop, does that do anything? Hmm, I'm not sure. Oh, if their king keeps moving, the square opens up. Hmm. Okay, we'll make use of the silver. Oh, I guess incidentally now I'm threatening to push this and push this and trap the silver here. Hmm. I'm not sure if last turn I had a trap or not. Oh wait, no I'm not. No. This pawn is still vulnerable. So the silver would just promote to get out of that. Yeah, it wouldn't be able to retreat, but it could promote. Um, hmm. Yeah, blocking my rook has proved to be far more consequential than I expected. On the other hand, uh, it's not easy for the opponent to attack here either. Hmm. All right, if they move the king, I could offer the silver exchange on this square. And if they drop here to try to promote, the silver is surrounded. Why didn't I do that last turn? I was spooked. That's why. 
Uh, silver up, tick, tick. Yeah. Um, hmm. Bishop takes. Pawn drop. Oh, never mind. Okay. Tactics didn't work the way I thought. If I go out here, their bishop takes me. Um, hmm. Hmm. That's a beautiful pawn move or drop. Hmm. I think I have to make a move I don't want to make here. This wouldn't be my first choice. However, nothing else seems to fit in this situation. So this expands their bishop and rook to be able to attack me more fiercely. But uh, this has the upside that there's no immediate break in my position or shape. They might move the silver up. But I have a pawn drop, which I don't want to do. But I might not have much choice. Oh. Well, okay. That's different. Mm -hmm. Backpedaling. Hmm. I lost audio here. Pardon me one second while I try something to try to get it back. Okay. That speaker did give me audio. But yeah, this approach where they were able to sacrifice this pawn to make uh, an uncomfortable situation and then bring their silver back. Yeah, they're defending quite, I don't know, uh, with a lot of pieces. Sure, if you throw enough pieces at any problem, it usually is enough to solve the problem, but there is a cost in using pieces. Um, mm -hmm. I hear ya. Yonju 
So, yeah, temporarily, well, no, maybe permanently I'm up upon, um, yeah, temporarily I'm facing a lot of discomfort, and it's going to take a long time for me to organize anything here. Um, and I see they're trying to build, uh, well, there's a shape known as Bear in the Hole Castle, which features a silver here. It would take a lot of moves for their silver to make it there. Um, I'm trying to take this square so my silvers can move around again. I don't like it that my rook is blocked twice. I need to find a way to get my rook active somewhere. I just don't know where. But yeah, this allows me to push this pawn and start moving my silvers again. But I don't know where my rook belongs. It's not clear there's a, any line that's wide open. Meanwhile, their rook is looking. There are so many potential targets in my camp. I'm not happy about it, but I'm, I'm up a pawn. I'm trying to be careful not to like, open some fatal thing. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's very tempted to move the silver up, but seems to lead to trouble. I don't know. It makes sense to lead an attack with the pawns. At least I need a pawn to be somewhere in some attack, otherwise eventually having my extra pawn will mean I just can't use it anywhere if pawns never exchange. But also the silver defends this kind of crucial point here. I don't want to give up that point. That doesn't make sense. This is like curling up on a ball and asking me not to hit you. Yonju 
40 That's what we're looking at here. The silver can't move up this way. I guess it could move up this way. Um, well, no, that would hang the lance. So it's retreating back down the diagonal. Probably. Yes, the opponent could sack the rook or sack a bishop or something, but... Um, not too worried about it. Not while their king looks like this. If the king were much better secured, I'd be much more concerned. I'm not saying my king's perfect either. But yeah, my plan's to move the silver up and then back down and then move this pawn out. That takes time, but I've got time. But this guy's got to stay here. Yeah, retreating might also make some degree of sense. But I think I have ways to protect the square in emergencies, so... Uh, we're going to push forward instead. <laughs> the point of their pawn sacrifice earlier was to get my silver onto the square, where it would block my pawn and my rook. They might not have known the pawn was going to materialize to protect the silver, but I think it was necessary. But yeah, here, uh, next I gotta retreat my silver, bring this pawn out, and gradually work my way up this board. Oh. Uh, I mean, that's a decent place for a silver. Um. Hmm. Tactics don't favor me. It'd be so nice if they did. Sanjudio. Well, uh, they almost... maybe they do. No, they don't. Well, maybe. No, it's... It's not worth pursuing. There's no fire. Silver up is exciting. And potentially bishop takes silver is available, but this is this is the, what's called for here. Um, so then one, two, three. Uh, it's just a very natural progression to push this pawn here. It'd be kind of strange for me to go all out uh, trying to sack and break this up while the king's right there, not here. The opponent's still trying to wait for me to decide my king's shape. Um. Oh. 
Okay. At first, it looks quite spooky. So they have a one general castle. And I mean, the golds protect each other, so that prevents my rook from easily invading. Um, potentially even protects against a lot of bishop drops in this area, as does their rook. But. Yeah, okay. So. It's clever. <laughs> hmm. Sanjuvio. Interesting. さん、十秒。四十秒。五十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八。30秒. The whole time I'm threatening Bishop takes silver, and maybe I invade with my rook somewhere. Um. 30秒 
40秒50秒12345 So they can win one of these pieces here by exchanging silver for silver and dropping a silver where nobody cares about. That's possible. Um, the downside of winning material in this manner, while my rook's floating out here, would be that I could bring my rook over to attack this, and it's not so easy for them to defend. There's a lot of loose stuff in their position. And I just secured my king, which needed to be done. Material to be After I take, I wonder what they'll do. I'm still trying to activate my rook. I still have a bishop in hand. This silver's still loose. Really, I should be defending this and protecting their king, but they need to find time for that and time to deal with everything else that's going on. Um, but yeah, I need to take this. Oh, my rook doesn't hurt. Hit this too hard. Does it? Oh, my rook but yeah, given extra time, my rook can just drop back. And suddenly, instead of having a one pawn advantage, I have an exchange of bishop for silver advantage in quality, not quantity. Um. There is a proverb that says, prefer to exchange uh, to get two pieces for one, even if there's a pawn in the deal. So they did exchange a bishop for a pawn and a silver, so actually, yeah, that didn't turn out well for me. Wait, yeah. Hmm. If I bring the rook over, they move the silver. Well, they block the diagonal here. Um, yeah, my rook in front of the pawns is risky. That's too risky. Sanjubio. Hmm, they've done well. So they slowed my initiative. I still have not built the world's most solid castle yet. So yeah, maybe I should have tried some of those crazier tactical things I was discussing earlier. Too late now. Um, but yeah, I need to protect my king somehow. This is not going to be easy. I mean, the easy way is if I drop my silver to protect my king, but that's asking for trouble. I need to have an attack. Uh, sir? Don't think that's what you intended to do. Um...
30秒40秒うん、50秒123456ジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャジャ So I'm threatening to promote the pawn. There's a very good chance they take it.、Um, but there's this big, big hole right here. I guess they could drop a pawn. I didn't consider that. I really should have considered that. That sucks that I didn't. So what do I do? This is what I was looking at. This distracted me that I could. Oh, well, I predicted this, but that's not right. No, no, this is right. Oops. My mouse sometimes double clicks when I. It's got some spring inside the mouse button, as do most mice. And sometimes it double registers the click. But yeah, this is where I intend to put the pawn. Yeah, it'd be nice to push a pawn further up the file. But the idea here is I'm going to break this shape up. If this moves forward, this bishop drop and retreat hits a silver. If it retreats,、eh, that's cool. If it retreats, we're not fighting. They're just slowly conceding ground. I predict a fight. I predict that some fight will break out here. But what do I know? Actually, if this moves forward, I could. Okay. I see. Probably should have foreseen this possibility. But it's fine. Yeah. It's unpleasant. Who said this had to be pleasant? Okay. Mm hmm. Okay, let's go back. Yeah, and this protects this point, which is clever. All right, a fight has broken out. They actually have pretty decent attacking chances throughout this fight. Um, So, I might need to sacrifice my bishop here. Maybe.、Um, like, they're hitting the square really hard. That's what I'm trying to say. But maybe I should just. Drop my silver. Like I said, I shouldn't. Maybe I should, just to defend that. 
Pawn up, pawn takes, silver takes, silver takes, rook takes, bishop takes. Seems okay. <sighs> Just feels bad. さん秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒秒
retreating was one move faster than advancing in this case. But it really bothers me that this rook can move over. And I predicted this, even though this doesn't look right. It's a very natural move. It's just not accurate. Oh. This is actually much worse than not accurate, isn't it? This is much, much worse for them than not accurate. Mm. This is so close to silver drop mating, but it's not mate. I have to show some restraint here, believe it or not. <sighs> Problem is silver drop, the king retreats, and if I take, king takes gold drop, the king runs away. It's not good enough. It's so close. What I do have here, though, is the silver drop. And probably others. So there's like a lot of things for them to be concerned about because I didn't carelessly drop my silver earlier. Okay. That defends that drop. Oh, and the other one. Hmm. That's annoyingly effective. Mmm, I missed the shot. Silver drop here was the shot. Well, no, even that doesn't quite work out. Oh, actually this has another idea that I just now saw. I'll bring up the pawn and bring the knight out and kick this. Thank you. Also, I can bring the horse back and back that hits this, and then do this. Well, then this hangs. So many ideas. I only get to make one move per turn.
But yeah, this is a nice castle shape. It is. And this rook next to the king idea is quite natural, too. Maybe I should have moved the knight out, but it looked too risky. Hmm. I thought that might happen. <sighs> this gets complicated. Sanjubio. Okay, there it is. Finally. The unpleasant bit is that they get to push this pawn again, and a lot of stuff could get exchanged here. Um, I haven't figured out everything yet, but yeah, I can't just, yeah, this has to happen. Well, on the other hand, my horse was not perfect. I, well, this diagonal sucks. I really don't want to give the horse... At least while the diagonal's wide open. If they drop a pawn, maybe it's fine. But... Mm. Yeah, so I'm committing to defending the knight's head. Okay. I'm surprised. This, if they bring the silver back, I think this is Truck Castle, which is not the shape they originally planned on, but hey, if it happens, it happens. Better a castle than no castle. So I defend my rook's head, but my rook continues to be misplaced. It's so hard to get my rook active without throwing this 
game or position. I am somewhat threatening to drop the silver here, and I don't know what. It's not really a threat because the silver drop in retaliation is so strong. Hmm. Okay, I exposed this bishop again. Welcome. Yeah, this we've reached a pretty critical point or phase in this game. Hmm. Sanju There's just a kaleidoscope of tactics all waiting to happen here. Sanju 
30秒40秒50秒1234567んうん30秒。40秒What's my opponent's point? They usually have a point. Hmm, I don't... I've been looking, I don't see it. I saw this coming, but I thought I had this defended more than adequately. It would have been really nice if I could have done horse takes with a mate to follow if they take the rook, but that's, again, not the situation we're in. I want to activate the rook, but it's so difficult to activate here.
30秒40秒I protect my king. Since I'm not fully sure how to attack here. But I know my king needs some kind of a defense. Kind of hate that I noticed this possibility. Because had I not noticed that, I might have tried something much more aggressive here. Um, but no, this seems like a calm way to address the opponent's ideas. The rook protects both lances, but as soon as the king moves one way or the other, uh, the rook can't protect both at the same time. Does so this defends my king while also attacking? There's one little detail with breaking up the head here. This is hanging. This prevents my horse from hitting the king directly. Uh, but also, yeah, the silver, I guess more importantly, the silver's protecting this square. Um, so much as I want to hit the king directly, like, I should hit the knight. Taking this is so tempting, but then they just defend their castle and I have to retreat or sack. Um, I don't know. It's an embarrassment of riches. But it blocks my bishop. <laughs> There's one little detail with that. 
Uh, oh my goodness. Um, I lost audio again. Okay, I'm going to toggle my speakers off and on. It seems to help things sometimes. I think this got left out of that calculus at some point. This pawn was cutting off my horse. It moved. That said, so much is going on in this position that um, that might not even matter. Sanjubio. <laughs> Taking the rook feels like a mistake here. Wait, does it checkmate? Yeah, feelings be damned, if that's a free rook, let's take it. Force them to drop a piece. Or a pawn, I guess. Yeah. Either way, that's one less attacker for me to worry about. Oh, but if they drop a pawn, like, no, I can't necessarily map up the pawn that easily.
30秒Yeah, thank you. 30 秒 It's not done yet. Hmm. It's a good thing my king is not exposed. That could have ended very poorly. I don't know what's going on. I keep losing audio repeatedly, so I can't hear the count. I'm watching the timer carefully. I don't think I would have found the checkmate if there was one here. Um, even without the technical difficulty. 30 Okay, my opponent has placed um, all of their pieces, so they can't continue to place pieces to attack me. Um... So the proverb we saw maybe an hour ago said better to find a short sequence that's a guaranteed win than to search for some long checkmate. Um, so that's what we're doing at the moment, is taking the first win we see that we know to be a win. So now the opponent is just going to run out of checks. Thanks for the game. All right, what an adventure. So one of the joys of the, this ladder is that we get to uh, review the game with our opponent afterward. Uh, nice. Yeah, that was exciting. Um, all right.
Yeah. Ah. Um, oh, okay, they have some comments. Sure. <laughs> Uh, yep, they defended quite well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I prefer reviewing games from the top, because otherwise you can get stuck in the end game. Sometimes crazy things happen in the end game. But more often, there's lessons to learn throughout the game. Sure. Cool. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, opposing rook is a counterattack. Uh Oh yeah, oh, very nice. Got us everyone starts somewhere. Yeah, the glowing ones are worth more. Uh, they can move pretty much any direction. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the point. It, it's a good fun activity. It helps clarify your own thoughts to talk about it. Uh, either way, I'm delighting Rook to 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is fine. I think what you played was also fine. Um, so yeah, in this uh, teaching ladder format, we play a higher rated and lower rated opponent. And being able to review the game afterward, you get ideas both by amateurs who have looked up a lot of uh, opening ideas, but just also communicating your thoughts and that your opponent asking about what you're doing. Um, forces you to stop and rethink things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this this guy here, it it defends this. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. <laughs> it's a good idea to activate the rook, but uh, I kind of sensed you were up to something here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it can be kind of difficult to enact even the simplest of plans. Yeah. Mm. I knew they wanted to reactivate the rook. Um, yeah.
Hmm. So, yeah, I really, really didn't want to drop this because it sentences my rook to a very passive role, but their bishop was too active. I couldn't just let it float around, and I didn't see any way to other other way to stop their rook and their bishop. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You gotta play... And they did pick a strategy. They ultimately ended up with Truck Castle. It was really solid. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, it's appropriate to have some level of concern. They spent a bit of time... Uh, well, they were defending very well. Um, yeah. This is where things kind of came apart. Although even here, they made things complicated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, sorry, the game, we ended up playing a bit late in the evening, so uh, we might have an abbreviated game review, and that's totally fine. But yeah, they the whole game they've been delaying their castle, and I've been delaying mine because they were delaying theirs. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. I think they had one other game to play as well, so they were probably a bit pooped. And that's, again, totally fine. There were a lot of really sharp things going on, but oh man, this hit hard. Finally, I get to hit, and it was just such a strong hit here. Yeah. So I patiently defended and then got to hit like this, because um, they did get to win some material, but I got to win it back immediately. Ah. Um, yeah, that was so close. <laughs> it's a good thing I dropped the pawn earlier, or that could have been a king rook fork right there. <laughs> yeah. But then, since, yeah, since things are the way they are, that my attack is just severely overpowering here. The free rook is a bit too much. And yeah, they weren't able to take the gold, and they know that, and I know that, so I'm not going to repeat it for them, but later on, you and I will take a look at it. Um, oh. Hmm. Hmm. Like, this is the fastest I could find. But, yeah, in theory, there's probably something much better. Oh, wait a second. Oops. Do I have this here? Uh, yeah, I missed mate in one. That's kind of embarrassing. We had quite a game, but, yeah, it's embarrassing to miss mate in one. Sorry about that. Mm. 
Yeah, and since they're probably, unfortunately, it's late at night for them, and they're quite accommodating to play at this time, but, um, yeah, I'm, all right, yeah, yeah take care, cool, nice, uh, yes, I'll do my own abbreviated review around, I assume they have to go, that's totally fine, yeah, um, so, what do we say? Yeah, I this was a game where both of us played very patiently throughout the game. It's kind of impressed just how patiently we each defended here. Um, so yeah, like looking at the beginning, I sensed, and I've done this on Shogi Wars as well, where the opponent's clearly intending opposing Rook. I think maybe even in the Teaching Ladder games in the past I've done this too. If opponents attending to play opposing rook, this is a counterattack. Every swinging rook strategy is a counterattack. So, like, in theory, if you really wanted... I don't know that you can, from the outset, could you get swinging rook if whenever you want it, if the opponent commits to opening this diagonal? That I haven't seen. But yeah, if you wanted third file rook or fourth file rook or central file rook, you could get any of those, but I don't know that you can guarantee, be guaranteed to get opposing rook very easily. This is the telltale move that a player really wants opposing rook. Oh, that's right. We have an opponent in the teaching ladder who always plays this. And so I guess that's why, yeah, I've been looking at or trying stuff like this. It's to try to discourage that sort of aggressive strategy. But yeah, this unfortunately straight out loses a move. Um... And the silver move, you know, it, it threatens to hit here. It also threatens to hit this way. The silver move here is by itself not bad. But, yeah, the what followed didn't quite build a castle. It did build an attack toward my lance, and I defended the attack, and then they start castling. And, uh, oh, this is committal. This does cut off my bishop, and I was really annoyed about it at the time, because it kind of forces me to make this exchange and continue trying to play normal moves. And I think they played... Oh, well, this is normal-ish enough. With my king in such a weird spot, giving up a pawn makes some degree of sense. But also, like, I'm going to be dropping the pawn back here, and it's just going to be a very slow game where I'm up a pawn. This does not make sense, unfortunately. This, um, it might increase the flexibility of their position, but this just gives up. Uh, so the silver started here, so it went one, two, right? And this silver, I forget how it got here, something like this, four, five. So the thing to point out here, uh... So they took five moves instead of one, two, three to hit the same square. So this basically loses two entire moves. And in Shogi, the value of a move increases throughout the course of the game. So if you're at, toward the middle game, a move might be worth a silver. Toward the end game, a move might be worth a rook or even a king. But yeah, in the opening, maybe our move is worth a pawn or something like that. And I am up a pawn, so I was able to give up the initiative and get a pawn. And then, yeah, we look at what's happened. So one, two, three, four, right? Meanwhile, I've gotten all these moves in. So I'm like clearly advantageous here. I had to retreat, and the opponent got to do their plan, and unfortunately them this didn't quite work the way they thought it would um i tried thinking about other ways to pursue this but no the rook move looks the most natural like dropping a bishop to protect this and then no i can't surround that never mind so yeah if they're trying something aggressive with like the rook over and the pawn up this might be the last shot to try it out but um they instead play this, uh, which is a solid move. And so I start 
removing their attacking forces. And they drop the same attacking force a rank back. Yeah, and then they recombine their pieces. And here I took this pawn and maybe shouldn't have. Maybe I had something better. It's hard for me to know. Um, I don't know. Like, this is tempting in a way. Because all their silvers are split up. But also I didn't want this pawn rapidly advancing toward my rook. So I was a bit concerned about this possibility. And this didn't look right to me. But maybe it's fine. I don't know. I took here instead and thought, you know, I can keep the file and get a promoted bishop. The opponent strikes back, as they should, perfectly. That's exactly how they would have done it. Taking the pawn, I don't know if it matters. Now I guess taking makes it harder for me to eventually get this break in. Yeah, this makes sense. It's just this... Yeah, I guess the silvers are all going to be floating targets no matter what. And this protects the head of this silver, so it's fine. I debated stuff like this, but my king is too imperiled for me to seriously consider that. This looks good, but maybe I have better. I don't know. Uh, the opponent plays a completely normal response here. Um, yeah, actually, if they go back this way, I drop the silver that wins the rooks. This is the right way to retreat. And, uh, I don't know. There are too many tactics here. One thing worth some consideration, I'm not saying this is right, might be just take the silver. Pawn takes. And take here. It's worth some consideration. Because we're threatening to take here, hit the lance, hit the rook, hit the lance, aim toward the king, all these sorts of things. But there was too much for me to try to figure out all at once here. And even right now looking at it, I'm not convinced. It might be a bit too much. Um, right? I don't know. No, uh, yeah, I don't like this. This would have been too much of a sacrifice, I think. Um, this silver drop again looked tempting, but my king is too endangered. Uh, promoting the bishop was unnecessary. Oh, good. So let me... Uh, I'm looking from my perspective again, aren't I? Um, so... Yeah, we were looking at, uh, what's it? Oh yeah, allowing this in the first place, maybe I should have thought more about. I've been mentioning that maybe I consider this instead. And I was a bit concerned, but what happened in the game was even more concerning. This looks much milder. There's just details to figure out. Like, what if they defend? What do I do? Um, hmm. I thought I... I assumed I would have an answer for this. I don't think I do. I assumed there would be an answer. But I managed to talk myself out of this because I couldn't see what was going on. I think I did correctly in talking myself out of it. Um, at this point, I'd have to sack this here, because if I were to sack the bishop instead, I'd take the bishop, and I don't seem to have a great continuation. They would be able to defend the same style and way that I was able to defend, and yeah, this attack would be repelled, and this wouldn't work. So instead, I'd have to sack here. 
they take I get a lance that's not the end of the world but uh, it's not great but I guess this is a lot safer than what I did isn't it hmm no I don't know the silver out in no man's land isn't doing a whole ton this night might jump out right away but then the rook's in danger but the rook can pr be protected and if i give up the horse for a rook then what am i doing yes this is hanging um hmm. so variation a would be if they tried to defend this i have this fork and i could take the rook and here, since there's so many things hanging in, if the silver moves, there I have a check, then maybe this taking the rook exchange might be profitable. This is just one thing that could happen there. Actually, they don't have a piece to block attacks with, so the lance drop is kind of really nasty. So that's one thing. But another variation would be this knight moves. And it's threatening stuff, and that's not fun um maybe again there's stuff here somehow so the knight takes pawn threatens knight takes silver i guess the sidesteps all of that um but there might be some potential that might no the horse doesn't really get trapped here does it not really so seemingly this is okay a silver sack for um, a lance and a pawn. Seemingly it's fine. I'd like to find something. Oh, wait. Before they do that, they might throw this in first. We'd have to dodge something like that. This I don't like. Um, I mean, yeah, I could try to drop a pawn back here if I could. Um, but yeah, this is not much better than what happened in the game. So let's just back up. This is what I did play, but in the game, I was also think well, I was thinking about this reroute, which reaches much the same end, doesn't it? Um, I guess the upside is like if I go back and if they do this, they wouldn't do it. But if they did, I wouldn't have to push here. I'd be able to just say no. You know, I don't want those exchanges. We could do something else. So um, instead, I played aggressively, which uh, somehow convinced them to make this retreat. Welcome. Yeah, we're just reviewing the game that I just played here. Um, so after we exchanged, I dodged out of the way of the silver attack and then moved back and my rook and silver cover everything just barely. And yeah, this is scary. This is scary. All this is scary, but stuff happened. So we exchange silver generals. I go back again. And yeah, they hit like they should. And I dropped this bishop. Maybe I had the bishop drop earlier, like I was saying, but um, this is fine, I guess. I suppose the real idea here would be just bring the horse toward the castle and then find some other way to approach their position. That'd be more normal. Um, this pawn move, yeah, it was concerning. I don't know how I... Why did I take that? I thought I had to. It doesn't really help my position to take it, does it? Oh, thanks. Yep. All right, see you around, Max. Um, but yeah, here I was debating, do I go back? Do I go over? Do I go up here again? What are all these fun options I have? Thanks. Yeah. 
And also debating this, but that's insane. It's much too dangerous to push this. Um, hmm. Feels like I should have something more than what I did. All right, have a good day. Yep. Feels like I should have something more. This night jump was probably too much for this position. They probably just had to bring the rook over and try their best here. Um, so, um, yeah, the night jump is always there, but this lands immediately and I think might compel me to drop my silver, despite really not wanting to drop my best attacking piece. As soon as I drop it, it can't jump anywhere on the board. Um, but I think I survive, and then I eventually figure out how to attack, And but for now it kind of sucks. Um, I think that's... well, maybe I have something better. Maybe I can push. I think the downside of trying to push here is that they get this in with tempo, and then they can take and push this, and I can't immediately drop this here. So unless somehow I can defend... well, maybe I can defend this. But then my knight's head becomes a target. This doesn't look right. Um, I guess what this all underscores is that pawn takes pawn just kind of sucks. Um, which, yeah, my retreating my bishop just gives the opponent a move to do this. Which I shouldn't. Giving the opponent a free move in this position is not a good idea. Yeah, better here would just be like this really painful move. It's probably best. And I've defended the weakness, and their silver stands in front of this pawn. It's not so easy for them to continue an attack here. And eventually I dig myself out of this mess. Because I have a castle, and they do not. So eventually this is going to work in my favor, but I need to be super patient about it. Probably shouldn't have gotten myself this deep into it in the first place, so how did that happen? I think when they pushed, I lost a tempo by trying to do something clever. And this helped their silvers join up. Yeah! This pawn takes pawn's actually really bad. I should just do this. Um, sure, they can attack. What? Oh, I'm sorry. They No, they can't. Sure, they could defend like this. And if my bishop retreats, then they can attack right here, right away. Um, Yeah, that's possible. Oh, there's one other hidden benefit to this. I was trying to figure this out during the game. So, this kind of traps the rook. Uh, and would beg for them to hit my bishop. Um... I was trying to reason about this during the game. Didn't get very far. Maybe this one. This way they're defending the rook and hitting my bishop. Oh, but then this lets this pawn go. Not that one, then. This is what I saw first during the game that convinced me I don't have time to figure this out. Um, let's look at what our next proverb is, just for fun. Alright, so... Yeah, I couldn't quite make it to the end of this variation here. I sensed there might be something going on, but I missed this. Oh, that's nice. That gives back the material. And then that's a fork. That would have been really cool. And okay, yeah, they move away, we take the gold, they take back somehow. Um, I guess if Rook takes, I have this gold drop on 6-7. Uh, so because of this threat, they'll want to do silver takes or silver takes. But then the Rook's trapped. Oh, they don't want that either. So I guess... I guess they're okay. Well, maybe not. 
Maybe this is actually pretty severe. Um, hmm. I guess they live. Uh, yeah, I was right. I didn't have time to figure this out. <laughs> That's check. That's check. That's check. And then we got a rook. Which probably doesn't look like it's worth it. Um... Man, well, that would have been, if this led to something, that would have been really cool. But it doesn't seem to lead anywhere. Uh, this bishop takes gold doesn't change that dynamic. So I could take here. I take my bishop, I take their rook. I've got a silver out doing nothing. They have a bishop in hand. I couldn't. I was trying to figure this out too, but I didn't get very far. I think they could just silver take silver and they're up a silver or some number of silvers. How many? I've got two silvers for or a rook for two silver. Not exactly worth it. Oh, wait, they can't take that. Never mind. Uh, they probably want to ignore it anyway. So that's one variation, is that they could get my bishop and I would get that. So I get two pieces for one here, is that right? I have a silver, I have a knight and a rook. Um, they have one, two, three silvers. What's the material balance? I've got my rook and bishop. I've got another rook. And a silver and a knight. Um, or rather, that promoted silver versus their... They've got an extra silver here. Um, yes, this is a straight up win of material. Um, so this bishop drop, if they play rook 2-8, and they kind of have to, or they play rook 1-8 maybe, just let me grab the knight. Um, but no, if they play this, yeah, they can hunt down my bishop, but I hunt down their rook. That's maybe I get the rook, or maybe it runs away. Um, and if it runs away, uh, I don't know. I've just collected a knight and stuck my silver where I can't use it. Um, hmm. Hmm. Pawn takes pawn is tempting. I don't know. It's not quite... Well, it's... This is way safer than the game. What am I talking about? Like, what happened in the game was absolute madness and chaos. What happens here is much easier to keep track of. Um, yeah, no, I just shut down their attack, and it's hard for them to revive it. Yeah, I've got a silver doing nothing, but it's okay. Um, yeah, the other threat I bear here is taking this and then dropping it here, which, well, it's not a mate threat, though. Not like the game. So that's not immediately on the table, but someday that might be on the table. See, so yeah, my pawn takes pawn just gave up a move. Where I at a time when giving up a move was a very bad idea. They tried to keep their silvers together. Ah, yeah, I underestimated this. This is what happened. And yeah, it was a nice attacking shape. Um, I almost moved the horse back to here, didn't I? Yeah, it's good I didn't. It's also good that I talked myself out of this. Um, yeah, because this isn't checkmate. It looks so cool, but then after looking cool, it just doesn't work. So, 
it's good to play moves that not only look cool, but also have the advantage of working. Uh, maybe, maybe this is okay. But why? Well, I guess the reason why is because there's an initiative here. It's actually not nothing. There's potentially also this push, or maybe someday dropping a pawn here and pushing. It's not nothing. And my silver is not surrounded. Huh. Yeah, this looks way easier than the game. Why didn't I do that? I don't know. I thought I would have something here, but... It was just luck, really, that I did. Um, yeah, I expected them to, like, put this kind of pressure on me here. Or I'd have to make a choice, and then I'd have to make another choice. I was expecting that. I um, was not looking forward to this, because then they're still threatening this and that, and this, and, like... Yeah, it's not easy. Um, I'd have to sack here. Uh, so yeah, the variation we were looking at earlier looks way more comfortable than this. This where all my pieces are hanging and all trapped and stuff. Like, why would I do this? So. Um, but the opponent didn't play the most incisive line. And I was able to convert this. Right? Um, yeah, rook takes looks best. Horse takes I was thinking about a little bit, but um, rook takes looks pretty straightforward. Oh yeah, and then this attempt to castle the king behind the generals in principle makes sense, but in practice it's a bit late to form a castle when the whole game you weren't really sure what castle you're doing, and then suddenly you know um, that then this happens. Yeah, oh, and I mentioned I was going to look at this with us, although I think I explained it a bit during the game. I mentioned it was a checkmate. Didn't explain how. Um, so this is the line I saw. Note that this protects that. And this protects that, so this is just everything's uh, protected. That's the line I saw, but what I missed when calling this a checkmate was that. I didn't see that, but I guess that doesn't pose any problem. Uh, worst case, we just sack the horse here and follow up with the rook. Um, but apparently, this also mates. Um, well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe it's not checkmate in the strictest sense of the word, where every move has to be check. Um, yeah, what about this one? So if they bail like that, hmm. We sacrifice another piece. I mean, this is gratuitous because we're winning in any event, but for the sake of what everybody calls checkmate, do we have such a thing? Variation A is they take on the square, and then they block this check. Um, yeah, improving, increasing the strength of the blocking piece doesn't help. Um, yeah, they can't stop the dragon here, so that's mate. It's variation A is if they take the thing, variation B is if they keep running. Um, yeah, I guess in the strictest sense of the word, there's not a checkmate. I don't see one. Maybe there is one, I just don't see it. That'd be cool, but yeah, I think our checks run out sometime around here, but regardless, uh, yeah, they because of stuff like that, the king defending the rook 
um, doesn't actually protect me from taking it for free. And that's kind of what uh, convinces me to go into the slide. Um, yeah, if the king's moving up here, do I have to mate here? I so I could take this and take that. That's good enough. Yeah, finding mate is hard. Finding it when you need it is challenging enough. Finding it when you don't need it is perhaps even harder. This check is gratuitous. Um, I was trying to get them to block with another their pieces, but I forgot that since this is a knight, this is not a pawn, they could actually drop a pawn back here. And then I thought, well, I could drop a silver to pile up on that. No, it just isn't. That's not the cleanest mate or path to victory here. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what the fastest path to victory is here. Something like taking that's probably not too bad. Uh, yeah, it gives him another pawn, but uh, it's fine. What am I looking at this for? Yeah, so note that I have this defended. My pawn protects here. They can't drop a piece where my pawn's currently located, but if they could, they still don't have enough to checkmate me. Uh, yeah, the only other thing worth observing, I guess, is you remember back here, I dropped this pawn. And then much, much later, they did this bishop drop, which hits my king and rook, except there's a pawn in the way. So I'm super lucky that that's actually not, like, winning my rook here. Although even if it wins the rook, like, say I had to drop this to block the check or something like that. Even if they win the rook, I'm probably still very, very strongly advantageous, if not winning by checkmate immediately. But I'm still fortunate that, like, anyway. Um, yeah, but I was so rattled by this, the possibility that that could have been check, that this didn't occur to me. Like this very clean mopping up the bishop. Or if it doesn't win the bishop, they just block. And now they've used their last defensive piece. And I'm totally cool with that because I'm just like this. This is the attack that never goes. So worst case, I just keep giving up a pawn and a pawn and a pawn. But anyway, we found a mate. Um, kind of accidentally, but good enough, right? Yeah, this blocks the bishop. There's a saying that without an attack, there is no victory. Um, this is kind of a concession that uh, the attack's over. I guess a way to try to continue attacking other than this insane bishop sack, which I, doesn't work. A different way to try to continue would be like push the pawn or sack the knight or whatever, but surely those run into a checkmate. But I just didn't see the mate yet, because I didn't need to see it. I didn't look for it. If I needed it, I'd be looking, but I didn't need it. Like, say they play... Say this is the most aggressive thing they can do. So first of all, my king could potentially still run out the front. Like, I'm not dead. Um, but, yeah. I mean, this looks scary, right? So... Here, I would have had to look and find stuff. Um, it's not easy. Shogi's not an easy game. Um, although, there's the same idea I missed in the actual game, isn't there? Oh well. Let's, uh, yeah. So what's our moral? What's our game summary, then? Um, the opponent really, really wanted a particular strategy, um, and I wanted to not see that particular strategy, because I still haven't found a perfect way to refute it yet. Or to... I don't know. Like, it's interesting that when you're playing a Senta, I know I play swinging rook openings all the time, but I play third file and sometimes central file rook. I generally don't play opposing rook as senta because it takes that extra tempo to set up. So I generally just don't try to get this. Um, 
It actually took some more extra tempi. They had to push the pawn to cut this, and then, yeah, um, in order to get the brick over here, they'd have to spend at least this tempo and this tempo getting it set up. So I generally have not tried for this. I might have maybe once or twice on Shogi Wars tried for it, but in general, this isn't something that I've aimed for. Um, so I somehow don't think as Senta this makes a whole ton of sense because it loses some time. And Senta usually can play something faster and more aggressive and more opportunistic. But yeah, my opponent really wanted to play a particular shape. And since I didn't want to see that shape, I played very aggressively here. Um, and I got my way. Um, I was curious... Um, what my opponent would do to try to, I don't know, drive the action in this game. They came up with a lot of ideas, but driving the action wasn't really at the top of their agenda. Um, yeah, they played a lot of really solid defensive moves that made it hard for me to break down their position, but we're, it was just concession after concession, waiting for the right moment to strike. This trying to castle the king was a good idea, but I guess as a game summary, uh, they played a defensive strategy that ended up being very passive. They gave me an extra pawn. I similarly ended up playing a more passive strategy than that which I'm much more comfortable and familiar with. I like playing, or I tend to play, whether I like it or whether I complain about it, I play wide open positions with crazy tactics a lot. Um, so uh, somehow this position just kept calming down repeatedly. My opponent would repeatedly make small appeasements and I would agree, okay, I'll stop my attack if you give me this and I'll stop it if you give me that. Um, but then here I just missed a shot. Like this bishop drop clearly looks right keeping the silver in the corner, blocking the rook. I didn't think it necessary. I relaxed early. So, um, I mean, I really wanted to activate the rook. I didn't like the advancing pawn. I didn't like this notion that this is going to hit me quickly. But still, I think bishop drop behind the opposing line was the correct way to go, instead of me trying to insist that I get to play fourth foul rook. That said, I mean, this worked out. But yeah, as a game summary, I deviated from my normal attacking style, um, but still managed to prevail through some tactics, and the opponent just being a bit adrift. Yeah, I guess this is the other moment. Since my attack is kind of dead, they could have spent this moment, I don't know, building some kind of castle. I don't know what, but they've taken the center by force. I don't seem to have a lot I can do at the moment. Uh, I, yeah, I'm spooking my opponent a bit, but I don't really know what I do. Maybe this, maybe that, trying to sack here or something, but it's it's not easy. Especially with this leaning, um, uh, with this potentially um, being on the menu. Uh, they struck a bit early to force me to do pawn takes instead of yeah, I guess I missed Silver Drop protecting this, so maybe that was right, but they just didn't follow it up right, and in the tactics I ended up prevailing, even though probably strategically they're doing great here, and my rook sucks, and my position's not so good. I've blocked my rook, or blocked my bishop, and my rook is stuck, so it's good I have another bishop, but um, yeah, they played well overall. Uh, it's just somehow, tactic after tactic, things worked in my favor once the position finally did open. So, yeah. Uh, just had a better sense of timing, I guess, than they had. But that's fine. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.